Hello guys and uh, welcome again. We continue talking about multi-threading. Uh, in my previous video I showed you what threads are, why to use them, how to create them in C++ Builder and of course uh, what is the main purpose of all the, uh, that story, right? So today we are going to see some uh, possible complications when using multiple threads and uh, how to uh, resolve them, right? Uh, so I'm going to create VCL Forms application and inside this header I'm going to create some uh, variable and okay and uh, uh, what I want is uh, to create for example a couple of threads that will uh, read and write into this uh, n so let's do it thread object t my thread increment Okay, and uh, so first of all, I need to include this. I want my thread to see my form and I want my form to see the thread. Okay, uh, so what uh, uh, is going to be executed should be put inside this method, execute. And what I want is that each of my threads uh, to increment variable n by one okay and i want um, each of my threads to do it for example 100 times okay and let's say that this is some uh, uh, complex operation that takes some time for example 10 milliseconds and now what I want I want my application to create a couple of threads and uh, let's see what the result will be so uh, I'm going uh, to create threads T my thread increment thread increment I'm going to create for example 50 threads okay and uh, now let's uh, initialize them uh, uh, well create suspended no i don't need to create them suspended but what I need is to wait until all of my threads are finished. There are uh, possible solutions like uh, wait for single object and wait for multiple objects. But uh, when using T thread, we don't use that. Uh, I'm going to use the function uh, wait for. Okay, so this method wait for will actually wait until this uh, thread is uh, done executing. And when all threads are done executing, I will show the result. And result of the variable n. And first of all, I'm going to set variable n to be zero when threads start. So uh, I have 50 threads and each of them should be uh, incrementing variable n uh, 100 times. So 50 threads uh, multiplied by 100, so that's 5,000, right? And result should be 5,000. Okay, so here it should be 5,000. Let's see what is going to happen. Okay, I press the button. Well, it says here 4,930. Hmm. Now it's 55. Now it's 19. So uh, there we see a possible bug. So why did it happen? Well, it happened It happened because uh, threads are uh, executing uh, parallelly. So uh, for example, let's say that we have two or more threads uh, that want to uh, increment this variable by one. So what happens? First, they need to read what's the current value. And if we have, for example, two threads, 
uh, they, uh, if they simultaneously read the value of n, they will both read uh, the value 0. Okay, and what will happen? They will both increment it by 1. So uh, both of them will set the new value to be uh, number 1. And that is a mistake. Why? Because there are two, two threads and uh, the current value uh, after they execute should be 2 and not 1. But like I said, they uh, accessed this variable in the same time and they both, both uh, saw that the current value is 0 and they both uh, rewrite uh, that value to 1. But like I said, it should be number 2. So what is the problem? The problem is this operation here. And uh, it is a critical operation. Why? Because uh, it uh, we must not let that uh, two or more threads uh, execute this uh, statement here uh, in the same time. And therefore, we need to use critical sections. So to, cre uh, to create a critical section, I am going to uh, create a crit critical section object. Critical section. Okay. And the critical section object uh, should be uh, initialized, for example, in a constructor. Our critical section object and now what I want is uh, I need to specify when to enter in a critical section and when to leave from a critical section enter critical section uh, from form 1 critical section and uh, so this operation is critical and then I will say leave critical section okay so uh, now we put uh, now we have put this operation in a critical section now let's see what will happen the result is 5000 so what happened uh, we simply said uh, that uh, uh, Threads will not parallelly uh, do this operation. They will do it one by one. And therefore, you cannot have a situation like uh, I showed you previously that uh, two or more threads are uh, simultaneously reading and writing into uh, some shared object like this one N. So critical section will uh, say, like I said, you can, uh, if one thread enters here, then all other threads must wait until this uh, current thread is finished. Then uh, after uh, that thread leaves, leaves critical section, then the second thread comes in and uh, also increments this variable. Then he leaves and so on. Okay, uh, so this is the example how to use critical sections and why are they used. So you saw uh, the problem that uh, can happen and how to uh, deal with it. But, uh, but also, uh, so I will delete this. Okay, if you don't use critical session now, section now, you see what happens. Uh, I think I also need to delete critical section, and you can call it, for example, uh, on form close or something like that. Okay, uh, but you can do it on your own, right? Uh, so uh, this is a very easy operation and they already uh, created functions uh, for something like this so we could use it simply uh, we could do it simply by calling inter uh, locked for example increment and now I need I would need to specify what is the address of the shared object so this is already uh, saying that uh, this uh, is the shared object and it will be uh, okay okay it must be a long hmm. okay and uh, it's working so 
you saw uh, you can use critical section enter or leave critical section or if you are using something like this which is really simple increment or decrement or something like that you can uh, use these interlocked uh, functions okay guys i hope that you understood uh, what is the main problem when using multiple threads and that is uh, the problem when accessing uh, shared objects objects and that's why you always need to have a uh, like I wrote these uh, statements, meaning enter critical section and leave critical section. Okay, guys, thanks uh, for watching. And if you have any questions, please uh, write and uh, ask. Goodbye.